I will admit that I went into this wanting to like the Galileos because they are Letcher and I like Letcher products and because, well, because they're Giz Audio and Timmy. I respect and admire Giz Audio's reviews and I respect Timmy's ears. So I figured they should be pretty good. So I ordered a pair on the day they were announced, getting in on the first 100 deal. But then I listened to a bunch of reviews from people who had been sent a free pair for review and got a bit worried. Reports were mixed. I even tried to cancel the order, but it's very difficult to cancel an order from Hi-Fi Go. So they came eventually. This might be the first review you have seen from someone who actually paid real money for the Galileos. So first of all, they come in this wonderful Let Your Box the beautiful illustration on the cover and the the echo of the deep let sure gives audio hi-fi go and they are as you would expect from let sure beautifully made i have this nice resin shell timmy says every one of these faceplates is unique and everyone is beautiful the IEM itself is mildly sculpted. You can see the little bit of a curve there that hooks into your ear. Good size, lightweight, and surprisingly, since I'm used to the S12 Pros, warm to the touch, even when you first take them out of the box. They come in what I would have to call a storage case, not a pocket case or not a carry case. This is definitely something you store them in you don't carry them in it. The cable is the standard Letsure cable that comes with the S12 without multiple terminations. You order it either with a 4.4 or a 3.5, balanced and single-ended. Works very nicely, smooth, not too large, easy on the ears. They fit wonderfully, no discomfort at all. Right size and the right shape, at least for my ears. They also come with a good selection of tips. You have fairly wide bore white silicon tips, and then you have the black silicone tips with a narrower bore. And that's supposed to be normal, balanced, and bass focused. But in my experience, I get actually better bass with the white tips. My feeling is these are particularly sensitive to tip choice. It's critical to capture the right amount of air between the ear tip, the seal, and your eardrum so that it resonates exactly the right frequency so that none of the harmonics are dampened. You have a good selection of tips and you should be able to find one that fits your ears. Do put some effort into it though. And if none of these tips work for you, go through whatever tips you have laying around. It's important to find the right tip, especially with these IEMs. By the way, I listen to Apple lossless and high-res lossless music on an iPad Pro through the Shangling M0 Pro used in DAC mode using the 4.4 millimeter balanced adapter. There's a link to my review of the M0 Pro in the description below. I ordered the Galileos with a 4.4 millimeter cable, so those of you listening on the 3.5 single-ended may or may not agree with my impressions. And my impressions are, jumping right into it, starting with the bass. The overall bass presence is excellent, but it's not emphasized or boosted. Low notes have great detail and texture. Drums hit solidly. Acoustic bass sounds natural and open, not congested or muddied at all. Bass guitar is crisp and punchy. There is not a lot of sub-bass rumble, but you can hear right down to the lowest notes. Try the audiophile recording, the collective's slow reduction for its deep electronic sounds, or any of the Mannheim Steamroll or Fresh Air recordings, which apparently were mixed so that you feel like you're sitting on the drummer's stool. Takata and G has impressive pipe organ lows as well. Cello is a difficult instrument to reproduce. It lives in the space between the bass and the mid-range, 
And on the Galileo, it sounds exceptionally fine. Great timbre and texture. It sounds rich and alive, very natural. Listen to Yo-Yo Ma in his classical recordings, or in Not Our First Goat Rodeo, a wonderful high-res recording somewhere between bluegrass and jazz, to get a sense of how a cello really sounds. Then there's the two cellos, the piano guys, Hauser, who's one of the two cellos, in his classical album. Cello is trendy right now, and I like cello, and I'm impressed with how well the Galileo handles it. Voices and soprano instruments like violin or flute on the Galileo are open and soaring with great detail and nuance. You can hear not only the note itself, but its ripples or its surround, the close harmonics that give it texture. Female voices, Lorena McKennett, Alison Krauss, are simply beautiful, full and rich with no strain at all. Try Allison's River in the Rain on the Windy City album or anything on the Robert Plant collaboration Raise the Roof. Male vocals have enough weight to sound completely natural. For a real treat, and to demonstrate the natural sound of the Galileo, listen to Geoff Castellucci's Blackbird or any of his other covers, and you'll hear a fully nuanced rendition from his lowest sub bass to his upper range. Again, other IEMs might add more sub bass and make his voice rumble and shudder and just about break loose on the lowest notes. But to my ear, those low notes sound more natural, cleaner, and more satisfying on the nothing added Galileos. Or listen to Mercy Me's Bart Millard sing I Can Only Imagine on the iTunes original version. You can hear the emotion in his voice, the rough edges, the gravelly texture, the heart breathing behind the words. Again, very alive and captivatingly imperfect. Or listen to Home Freeze Leaving Dixie. The tone and texture and heft of the male vocals on the Galileo is refreshing and uplifting. You might expect, if you've seen a frequency response curve for the Galileo, or listened to some of the other reviews, that the treble would be a problem, perhaps a bit rolled off or laid back. But to my ears, the Galileos reproduce crystal clear high notes on the high strings, bells, chimes, cymbals, etc. Check out the high mandolin work on Not Our First Goat Rodeo and a balanced set of upper harmonics to add life and detail to the mid-range, and the bass for that matter. Admittedly, my 75-year-old ears may have lost some treble sensitivity, but I do not hear any lack in the treble on the Galileos. One of the hardest instruments to reproduce well is the piano, because of its range and its harmonic complexity and richness. I tuned pianos to supplement my income for several years, and I know what a piano, all different kinds of pianos, are supposed to sound like. Listen to the Brooklyn Sessions 10, Vivaldi's Four Seasons Summer, a virtuoso piano piece, or listen to David Lance's Soul Dance from his latest album, Water Signs. I also listen to a lot of both acoustic and electric guitar. Eric Tingstad is one of my favorites on either guitar. And again, the Galileo reproduces guitar as well as I've ever heard it reproduced. To me, one of the most impressive aspects of the Galileo is how well they reproduce a sense of space and how well they place the instruments. The sound field is expansive and the instruments are placed in three dimensions, not just two. It makes other IEMs, when you go back for comparison, feel boxed in and flat. It is apparent on any well-mixed track, and really apparent on intentionally, playfully complex mixes, with lots of panning and tracking and sonic surprises popping up out of left field. Again, Mannheim Steamroller comes to mind, but New Age or Chill Music by David or Diane Arkenstone, or Dean Evanson, or Kevin Woods, will show off the exceptionally open spatial expansion of the Galileos. And of course, orchestral and symphonic works. Listen to the New Dawn album from the London Symphony. Turn up the volume a bit and just let yourself go into the musical space as only the composer and the conductor hear it. Let's be clear, the Galileos are not like most IEMs out there today, and they take some getting used to. Every time I put them in my ears, my first thought is, they are light and bright, maybe too light and too bright. But then I let myself relax into the music. The bass, when it comes into the mix, makes itself heard, and the rich texture comes out. The highs sing a bit. The voices and the violins and the flutes and guitars win me over with their right here, right now sound. The whole musical experience expands to fill my space until it no longer sounds different 
It just sounds right. Natural, unstrained, uncolored, uncontested, expansive, inviting, <laughs> and so much fun. I don't have a lot to compare the Galileas to. I have a pair of truthier x critical zeros, which have much more sub-bass rumble and bass punch, but are a bit stiff and edgy in the mid and the upper ranges. I have a KZZSN Pro X, which is just not even in the same universe as either the Zeros or the Galileo. And finally, I have a pair of Letcher S12 Pros. And they are very fine IEMs, but somehow, after listening to the Galileos for any length of time, the S12s just do not sound quite as natural, and certainly not as expansive or as lively. Maybe part of that is the planar timbre I hear about. Honestly, I think the natural sound of the Galileos has everything to do with harmonic balance. I can hear when a piano is in tune with itself, in perfect temper, the well-tempered piano, because all the harmonics play nicely together, and every note is buoyed up, lifted, illuminated by the full range of the frequencies we humans are blessed to be able to hear. Believe me, when I say that the Galileos sound to my ear like a well-tempered piano, it is high praise indeed. And of course, the Galileos are not perfect. A touch more bass would not go amiss. But I would not trade more bass for any loss of clarity in the mid-range or vocals, and especially not for any loss in that harmonic balance that makes the Galileos, in my opinion, quite special. So yes, if the goal was to produce an IEM with as natural a sound as possible on as many different kinds of music, I think Timmy and Letcher got it mostly right, as right as is humanly possible and technically possible, especially at the $100 price point. The Galileos will take you for a trip to the natural musical universe. Lots of fun.